All right. Let's let's kick off our uh, course, Economic Geography and Sustainability. Welcome, everybody. So some heads up before I start sharing the screen. Uh, my name is Eduardo Oliveira. I uh, hope I'm arriving at your place, wherever you are in good conditions. Just let me know if uh, I am not arriving in good conditions in sound and video. And once again, welcome to everybody. We have now 14 participants and uh, probably people will come in. Uh, the first heads up here is that the lectures will be recorded. I hope this is fine with you. If you, uh, if you prefer to remain uh, uh, off uh, the, the video, you are free, of course, to switch off your, um, your camera. But this is, uh, these lectures or the recordings and the sound will be only shared among ourselves within this group and not uh, anywhere else. So then we will have access to my Google Drive because of the space I'm um, not um, able to store these at the OLAT uh, platform. And um, I share with you in the chat window some links. Uh, you probably have uh, already uh, consulted them. Uh, the main um, link to the documents where um, the um, lectures as a PDF file are uh, already there. But please always check the, the, the final version. So they, they have been revised uh, in line with, uh, with uh, the previous um, with last year's uh, lecture, but I, I bring some new elements. I reframe them a little bit here and there. And before coming to live, I always check if there is some things that need to be changed. So please always check the, the, last, the last version. And uh, you also have the link for this group, something I found that could facilitate the registration as there is no formal link for the registration. I see that some of you are already there. I'm able to send a mass a mass communication if I need, but uh, you can also fill the form and uh, I would prefer this last version if you fill this shared, uh, shared Excel uh, file. And if you have problems again, in terms of, uh, of sharing the data, you can just email me the same data and uh, as one of the, the uh, one of you um, did yesterday uh, uh, afternoon, then I will, include those uh, those elements in my uh, in my own archives so you already understand that we are here as a team and then i'm your colleague after all not as a, as a, as a as a professor or as, as a lecturer uh, i'm on your side and i'm also here to facilitate your learning process and we are here to exchange knowledge and to breathe in a free environment where everybody is free to participate and uh, where your preferences are taken into account. So if something makes you uncomfortable at some stage with the content uh, or with, with the content of the lectures or the organization, just please uh, uh, write to me and we'll try to, uh, to accommodate. And uh, I'm very pleased to see now that uh, the group is expanding. We have uh, 24 participants uh, or 25. And this brings together Erasmus students from all around the world, students engaged with the Master of Society and the Environment, and those engaged with the Master of Urban and Regional Development. So once again, welcome everybody. And my name is Eduardo Oliveira again. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Portugal, so you may grasp some accent in some of the words. And in terms of background, my background is actually in spatial planning. And, but I explore the linkage between spatial planning, planning for urban regions primarily and economic geography or economic activities within a specific uh, physical planning context. You will see two slides on the, this context. Uh, I hold a PhD from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, and I have work experiences in uh, Switzerland, in Belgium and uh, in Portugal as well, and now here at uh, at the Cow Kiel in uh, Germany. So, I'm gonna start sharing the screen, and um, you are free to interrupt me when you uh, feel like interrupting, and or just drop a message uh, on the chat, and uh, and off we go. Just minimizing here to to uh, to not interfere. So. Let's advance on our um, 
on the lecture is a bit of a roller coaster today and maybe not necessarily that outstanding first lecture. We have a kind of, of some housekeeping rules here, uh, touching upon the structure and organization of the course. I think these are essential elements. But one thing that you can already from these minutes onwards start thinking about your essay topic, which is the essence uh, for everybody involved with Erasmus or those involved in these other two, two master courses. So it's time to start thinking uh, about your essay topic. And the lectures are here. So as you may understand, six lectures required me to pack a number of, of economic geography concepts. And I try to only bring those concepts that can have a, a more clear linkage to sustainability and to addressing uh, sustainability challenges. Hopefully, how we'll evolve throughout the day will make the things the things clear. You know, in terms of the assessment, the essay, and fulfilling the deadlines aligned with the, with the essay. I mean, with the seminar are are here essential, and we will go through economic geography in terms of of definitions. And again. Do not. I'm not expecting you to then drop these definitions in your history. What I'm calling you is to think beyond norms and beyond mainstream uh, conceptualizations and break the chains to surprise me in terms of how you address a specific sustainability issue through the lenses of uh, economic geography, economic geography concepts. But there is a lot of freedom, and you may understand that uh, I'm also slightly more flexible when compared to some of my colleagues at the university. Hopefully this is also your idea at the end. So I'll be bringing to you in English the best I can, believe me, the six lectures from today until uh, the beginning of, of December. And I will bring to you, to those engaged with a Master of uh, Society and the Environment and Erasmus students, the seminar composed of an essay and the presentation and a number of uh, deadlines in between and Professor Robert Hansik will be in charge of the seminar for the students uh, of, of the Master in Urban and Regional Development. And uh, I'm affiliated to the Economic Geography uh, Working Group within the Department of Geography at the University of Kiel. Here is the link to check what we are currently doing in terms of research and, uh, and teaching. So I'm planning here two parts, uh, a lecture with two parts, 40 minutes, but this will vary. Sometimes I, 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 I let myself going with a stream of the discussions and I tend to forget to, to do the breaks and uh, or to do the 10, one, uh, min, one, 10 minutes break. And, and if I do that, and if you feel that it's time to do, to do a break, please interrupt me and, and, and we will then do a, do, a, do a coffee break or whatever type of break you want to do. And uh, again, this is a co-created environment, so everybody is, is, is invited to participate and to, to join, to bring your ideas along. These are not fixed or restricted containers of knowledge. We are here precisely to share knowledge in the, in the, uh, 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 where everybody can cooperate and share their thoughts. And he, this happens within the lectures, but also happens very much. And the experience shows that happens more via email and via parallel Zoom talks when uh, I start interacting with you about your uh, essay topic. So this is in the, 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 the domain we can uh, both, me and you, uh, uh, thrive to build something, something useful, something insightful in terms of sustainability that can also contribute to economic geography literature. You can bring challenging questions. You can question also my assumptions, and uh, and you will I, I will give an example of this, and we should continue the debate behind the lectures. I think this is the uh, essential. A little bit of my teaching approach, this kind of slide that I always bring. Uh, if, if someone asked me to, to prepare a lecture elsewhere in another universities when they ask me about my teaching approach. And this is kind, kind of, of, of a standard, uh, the, the standardized uh, presentation or slide I bring to them is that I tend to, to understanding the teaching as a learning experience is fundamental and we keep exchanging knowledge and the students and the students' ideas and perspectives there to be taken into account that this is why in this context of this module, there is no exam, the essay is, is somehow translates this teaching approach because you are free to bring the topic you, you feel more attached to and then the, that can, can somehow 
organically without much stress uh, uh, help you with a daily with a daily work with with the writing uh, when it comes to 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 write or an abstract or the final or the final uh, draft and I rely very much here and also on your background. I, I'm aware that you come from different backgrounds, uh, from geography, from eco economic, sociology, psychology, uh, every, all the backgrounds here are fundamental here. So we can, we can really grasp and, and contribute to construct economic geography and sustainability as, as, a, as a strand within uh, economic, uh, economic geography. And I'm always trying to be very optimistic that we can play a role, we all play a role in addressing sustainability challenges. And you will understand that I, that I share, I share uh, this position and I repeat sometimes myself very, very often throughout the lecture that we can still play a role and try to address some real life problems. Of course, we are not decision makers or I am not a decision maker. I'm, I, I do not have any position of deciding, but I can still with my own behavior as a consumer, when I go out to the supermarket to buy a pack of coffee, try to see if they fulfill the rules in terms of fair trade or other issues. So we all have a role to play. And as researchers, you are now playing the role as a researcher. We are also, we also have a role to play in bringing some ideas into the discussion and sometimes shaping or influencing one discourse is already enough to try to grasp some change and, and bring or convey a message to those in uh, uh, positions of decision making. But what's I, important to underline here, and please uh, then go back home, uh, do your commuting, to, 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 your, to your places, but think that, that the ideas I bring to you, the concepts, they are the result of a, of a social construction. Researchers uh, for, for, for based on qualitative, quantitative research methods, very well explained, but they are socially constructed. So we have always to embrace a critical thinking when we are approaching specific subjects in the case of economic geography and also in many other domains. So keep in mind that is important to embrace this, uh, this, this spirit of uh, criticism towards some of uh, the concepts, ideally try to argue based on other uh, published material. And that is essential to, um, to for example, write um, um, a valuable essay. So I try to focus here on this down part of this diagram, playing with the constructivism and the connections between the students and the, the, the person that is conveying the, the, the concepts and the knowledge, so the lecturer here. Uh, and I try to focus my attention on your prefaces and your and on your on your perspectives and I value and I try to work with you on these on these concepts rather than than influencing you to work on some specific concepts. So at outset at out, uh, outset I can I can already say that I do not want you to do part of my research. This is a kind of approach to some of my colleagues, uh, not necessarily in this university or uh, elsewhere, they try to do, uh, ask the students to engage in their own research, but I do not want to do that. You are free to bring your own ideas and develop them throughout. And I'm here to help you thrive in this, in this context, but no panic at this stage. So don't, don't start being um, frightened that I'm already talking about too much theories and products. I try to seek a balance between them. If you go into a lot, you will swim in the number of, of, of references of literature. They are certainly the result of my own research and very specific, uh, a very specific search for those more important. Uh, and they are there to help you to grasp uh, better your, your ideas. So we I want to do this in the, this relaxing uh, atmosphere, use that literature, but please also go behind uh, that uh, literature that is now shared in the OLAT platform, and I will keep updating it uh, uh, regularly. It's important to think critically and independently about the concepts we are discussing in the lectures and then uh, during the during the seminar. They don't forget that you have also to present your your topic to the to the team um, to, to to all the group uh, at a later stage in. Um, in January. So uh, uh, a little bit two slides or, or what I'm doing here in economic geography with the background in spatial planning and more specifically in strategic spatial planning. Uh, some time ago, I, I have conducted a, a research 
uh, engaging or linking concepts of planning, uh, physical planning, uh, to concepts of economic geography. And here, a framework prepared for a lagging behind the region, northern Portugal and Galicia, um, where I try to explore the concept of constructing regional advantage, and I bring uh, together different economic geography concepts. We have here the concept of of a uh, related variety, unrelated variety. We will not go through this uh, in this module as I don't find very interesting connections in terms of the sustainability, but they are both related to the, to the organization of the economic landscape and is the essence of economic geography. More interesting, I try to bring together different types of knowledge and these are fundamental when we are trying to, to somehow explain how a region that is lagging behind in terms of, of, of uh, income and GDP production, how these regions can become more attractive and engage in this competitive arena that now goes beyond uh, borders, goes beyond Portugal, goes beyond Spain, beyond the Iberian Peninsula and beyond Europe. So it's, it's, we are, these regions are playing in the worldwide competitive arena. And I identify here how this uh, two regions separated. They are both embedded in different countries. They have different types of governance, how they can come together, how they can join forces and different types of knowledge to build a more cohesive region that can help to, to boost social economic uh, uh, domains within a for the people, for those living, uh, living there or, or that intend to, to, to live there. Within the research, uh, 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 within the strategic spatial planning research that I've been doing uh, uh, recently, and this we are talking about long-term planning, uh, uh, planning processes that often cover 20, 30 years, and around yourself, uh, around you, probably the the, uh, the city from where you are coming from, or the the area, the the spatial context you are coming from, they are all uh, to some extent. Uh, um, embed or interlink with some kind of strategic special planning. There are several examples in Germany and many others in the Nordic countries. Hamburg, for example, works on a strategic special planning. Uh, Hanover, Stuttgart, uh, these are some of examples that we use to construct this framework where we bring economic activities, where we bring the organization of the economic landscape into strategic special planning. Uh, Stockholm, they all have uh, these strategic special plans. Probably the train or the bus you are taking back home or, 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 or when you go to supermarket, probably is also the result of this long-term planning for that specific location. So although we are engaging with a physical dimension of planning, economic activities and uh, aspects of sustainability, such as the uh, urban, uh, green infrastructures, for example, they are all part of uh, uh, long-term planning processes. And I always put the links to the literature so we can, you can easily click and access them. So the overall goal within this, uh, this module uh, is to look at sustainability from economic geography perspective. And here the, 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 the possibilities are, are endless. We can, we can, so the concepts I bring in the next lectures from the second and to the last, they are only one part of what can be done within uh, this, uh, this, within this goal, within the aim of linking sustainability or addressing sustainability through the lenses of economic geography. And uh, uh, last year, I also have included the essays of your colleagues uh, from last year as an example that can eventually inspire you. Uh, some interesting, uh, interesting works that they 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 bring concepts that I even. Uh, even discuss, I, I have not discussed it within the lectures. So this was this is particularly interesting and I'm also looking forward and I strongly believe that you are uh, capable of bringing uh, very interesting essays and we can have a beautiful conversation when we organize the, the seminar as a, in a conference style. So the course goals, repeating here myself, uh, eventually for those that uh, were not able to attend the first, uh, the first lecture now, I don't see how many of us are online, but it also doesn't matter. So we here the goal is to, or more specifically, is to explain economic geography uh, concepts, uh, corporate social responsibility, corporate spatial responsibility, global production networks, global supply chains, and uh, try to understand the interlinkage with 
sustainable development with the sustainable development goals and also of course touch upon the conversation and all this discourse around sustainability transitions which many of uh, of uh, my colleagues are currently engaged with in terms of research and uh, and uh, not only those that are uh, doing pure research within economic geography but also those doing research within planning they tend to engage with the sustainability transitions more on the perspective of the governance components of the sustainability transition that means understanding who plays the key role in this sustainability transition so the ultimate goal is addressing uh, sustainability issues, sustainability challenges. This can involve uh, uh, agriculture production, can, can, can be about how, you, how this banana can get to your table, or it can also be about how this shirt come to be placed in the, in the, in the, in the, in the shops in our streets. There's a plenty of elements with an economic dimension that are linked to sustainability. And this is the role you, uh, you have to start playing right now is to start thinking how these economic activities are linked to sustainability aspects. And do not forget, I know that you also have other lectures where you, where you, can, where you have been grasping sustainable developments. Uh, and here I tend to focus more on the social and economic dimensions of sustainability, a little bit on the eco and ecological aspects as well. So that is different. You don't have to engage with all these principles, the social, the economic and the ecological. You can engage only on the social components, labor rights, human rights across supply chains, for example, understanding what, what a number of countries need to, 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 to do for this banana to be placed in the European market, for example. Are they paying fair wages? Are they respecting labor, labor rights? What kind of, of institutions are in charge of controlling only the fair trade institutions, very much voluntary process? Is the European Union doing something? Is my own state doing something to bring fairness and the um, equity to us to a globalize that supply chains for example so i'm already paving the way for some uh, for some uh, interesting topics and ideas to then to bring this together in the in the seminar uh, translated as a, as a, uh, as an essay and i'm very much convinced that, and based on experience uh, uh, of the module last year and also in other courses that you will be able to prioritize issues related to sustainability i will uh, certainly help you to 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 narrow your idea down and be focused on what is more important and i and i here invite you to think beyond the concepts but also beyond the geographies all right we talk about economic geography uh, not uh, not not the economic geography of Europe or not the economic geography of the global north, or if you prefer the uh, high income countries, I invite you to very much to look to low income countries in the global south, uh, uh, Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, South America, that they all play a role in these globalized supply chains, for example, of, of coffee, of cocoa, of palm oil. So these are, are uh, economic activities that have a strong impact in terms of sustainability. And I'm certain that you will be able to improve your writing skills uh, as, as far as you go along this, uh, the, the, the course and with a seminar and eventually advance in your career, uh, career prospects. Of course, I'm being here uh, too much ambitious, probably not. It's important that we all share some ambitions to, to, to only, not only to fulfill our own desires in terms of, of, of research or, or career prospects, but also as a, as a members of the society we live, uh, we live in. And um, some of your colleagues last year, they are also uh, receive my support for, for example, grant applications to apply for uh, summer schools elsewhere. So I also invite you to look to this kind of opportunities that you have around and try to engage with them if they are in line with um, your um, with your perspectives towards towards the world or to, towards the world that you want to live in six lectures uh, the today's lecture and the follow-up uh, lecture more focus on the sustainable development goals through the lens of economic geography and then we'll uh, jump to sustainability transitions more on the governance side of the sustainability transitions we'll talk about slow innovation and circular economy some some more hot topics that the uh, economic geographists and other researchers are currently engaging with 
and, and I found that the students are very much interested in these type of topics. And then it's important to, to understand who plays the key cards in this organization of the economic landscape. So we'll talk a little bit about corporate social responsibility, more from the side of uh, enterprises, of, of, of large corporations, but also probably a new concept to, to some of you, corporate spatial responsibility. This is when some uh, uh, urban regions, and this can be, for example, a German state, as in a, in a uh, yeah, as, as a, yeah, some German, I'll bring you the example of the rural area or, or uh, areas that are organized in a, in a multi-governance level, what they are doing to, to engage the companies that are located in that, in, that, in that region in sustainability principles and what's happened sometimes when they, they, they um, try to convey um, a positive message but doing something completely opposite the so-called the greenwashing and aligning to this the last lecture will be more on the mission oriented innovation policy is also a topic that is currently being highly discussed and the lectures will be uh, placed in this link in the google drive so some heads up on in terms of the material uh, or the sources that are that that you can use to start searching for literature don't forget that you have to prepare a reading list align with your topic certainly google scholar very very important um, and but there are other sources and you are uh, free to explore them and bring also um knowledge not necessarily from this so-called academic standardized or mainstream sources, you are, for example, free to engage with the documentaries in, in Netflix or in YouTube. Uh, sometimes there are these large scale classes online that can help you to grasp a specific topic. It's important to bring some uh, academic articles to your reading list, but I'm also flexible to the extent of accepting, for example, alternative sources of, um, of, of knowledge. And I often do this exercise when you come to me with a certain topic. Some of you may uh, come with a topic that 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 wh where the literature is scarce. There's not much studies on this context. Some an exercise that you can start doing the moment you have uh, some topic in your mind. You start using these search strings in the in Google Scholar, for example. Use here the. The, the quotation marks between the concepts you want to explore. This is very, very simplified way. Economic geography, and then you capitalize this hand sustainability, and you said you you use uh, try to to narrow this down to more recent publications, and um, Google Scholar will present you uh, a number of of academic articles where these concepts or there these words are. Uh, uh, um, are explored to the maximum extent. So you can you can do economic geography and sustainability, but you can also do economic geography or economics and sustainability. You can play with the and and with the or, and and we will get some some certainly some interesting interesting results. A few important references to keep in mind. These are these are. Uh, Names of economic geographers and other time and, and other and uh, another not other type sorry, the researchers engaging with the other type of research more on the sustainability on environmental science as well, and uh, I invite you to explore them and to see if the topics they are they are researching are aligned with your ideas. But these are only some names. There are plenty of of researchers out there doing very interesting. Uh, uh, works that can inspire you to some extent. And what's the call I leave here? I leave a call for you to go behind also the mainstream uh, researchers, try to engage with uh, literature from the global south. Uh, I know that this sometimes is very difficult and Google Scholar does not tell you if this research is, is based on you, then you have to dig in. If this research is based on an institution in the global south, in, in Southern Africa or in Argentina, uh, so, so, but I invite you to bring uh, uh, literature from uh, less uh, uh, explored geographies and also engage ideal with young researchers, not only will establish other academics such as David Gibbs, Christian Schultz, for example, Ron Bosman, core names, prime names within economic geography. You are invited to also bring alternatives, um, uh, alternative sources to your to your essay. This is easy to say, but it's difficult. It's difficult to do because again, 
if you really want to have a balance in terms of uh, researchers doing research in uh, high income countries uh, in Europe, for example, with those doing research in uh, less represented geographies is very difficult to grasp. And this is one of the weak points in terms of uh, academic research and overall. And uh, here's some of the journals that, uh, that I always go when I want to, to search for up-to-date references in terms of economic geography and sustainability. Some of them with very high impact factors means that they are very, they are, they are trustworthy. They publish very serious research. Sustainable Citizen Society, an excellent, an excellent uh, um, uh, 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 journal. Native sustainability, some of them more focused on economic geography, and this here in between or playing between planning, economic geography, cultural geography, uh, political economy, and environmental science, such as the global environmental change, with a high impact factor, with very interesting insight, insights uh, throughout them throughout the years. So uh, hopefully we are getting we are getting close to the break, and I think we are also getting close to the point in the presentation I wanted to go through. It's important that you start taking the time to think beyond the mainstream, break the chains of common knowledge, and go beyond the the the, the so-called uh, mainstream geographies in terms of economic geography. Try to explore. Uh, uh, issues within uh, within sustainability challenges that then can can be can contribute to a better society worldwide, but also and fundamentally in the those countries that are less represented, the less represented and contribute to the organization of the economic landscape through supply chains of uh, agricultural products or or raw materials such as palm palm oil for example is important to to start thinking on this on this concept so we can truly engage uh, with the grand societal challenges and the idea of the today's lecture is to come to you with this empty blackboard where you start filling it with with keywords and these keywords and you start trying to make connections between the keywords so again I am not interested, and certainly Professor Robert Lansik is also not interested in, in, in reading definitions of what is uh, 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 social ecological systems or, or the patterns of industrial development in Southeast, uh, in Southeast Asia, but understanding the relationships to what extent and industrial development in some specific territory. As, uh, an urban region a region impacts social ecological systems in that specific context and are there relations to governance elements who is playing the key card who has the power to decide about the organization of the industrial setting are there specific laws trying to bring fairness to, to, to the industry, for example, the, the, the recent uh, the German global supply chain that tried to bring some fairness to these globalized supply chains in different domains in the, fa in the fast fashion industry fundamentally. So there is a number of power relations impacting how the industry is located in that specific location. And it's also important to understand the role time plays in the evolution of the economic geography. And this is a fundamental, uh, a fundamental pillar of the evolutionary economic, economic geography. And I will tell you a little bit more uh, later on. So ideal, I invite you to engage with these uh, sustainability challenges, also call it uh, in many other places, grand society challenges. Think uh, local, think about local, possible local solutions and how these local solutions can support a global play for sustainability, uh, for sustainable development. So um, it's important to be ambitious again, and but uh, the experience also shows that if you narrow your idea down, and if you have a case study, this is certainly will facilitate your writing, but you don't have to necessarily to engage with a case study. And if you do, try to engage with a lower scale, because then you can grasp the reality much better if you engage with a global dimension. So, and then because this is only an essay, you are not writing your master thesis yet, you are only writing an essay. Of course, if you can use the essay to help your mind develop the idea for your uh, master thesis, that's certainly very helpful. You don't have to do that, of course. Uh, so start thinking about a specific subject and start thinking about a possible case study in terms of a geographical location and try to understand what they are doing. And if they have local solutions, sometimes the local context, they provide very interesting lessons that can be learned by many other locations. And then we can start 
piece by piece, like building this puzzle where we can really shape or pave the way to a sustainable, a sustainable future. And this is a fundamental, uh, fundamental dimension of the of the next next uh, the next lecture. You are invited to look at the sustainable development goals, which we take as a framework for sustainability, beyond the definition of 1992 of sustainable development. There are many economic aspects attached to the sustainable development goals. Uh, um, you don't have necessarily to build a case where you want where you where your essay addresses the, the sustainable de development goal number two so the essay should speak by itself you know? so you don't have to really force any kind of 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 way to address one of these other goals if you do it is great but you don't have you don't have to do they are here to to eventually help you well this is part of the discourse around the sustainable development goal number three how i can rethink the organization of the economic landscape, how I can think economic dimension in this spatial context, to what extent, if I if I, if I rethink this other concept, can help to 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 um, to can help this this society or this uh, or this place to embrace a more a more sustainable approach in the development process. And also when we are talking about sustainable development goals and ways of addressing them and ways of operationalizing them, it's important to bear in mind that there are synergies and trade-offs. And here I'm trying to go a bit slow to see if we, I can, you, you can grasp me uh, uh, in, this, in this domain here. So synergies means that if we are progressing in one goal, for example, in poverty, we are also helping to progress in another dimension. I give the example. So if, you, if, if there are a number of mechanisms helping to operationalize the sustainable development goal number eight in terms of decent work and economic growth, we are certainly contributing to the progress in the goal number one. But there, is also, there are also trade-offs in this context. Sometimes the progress in one goal hinders the progress in another. So there are some sort of, of blockage. And there is another definition of trade-offs that I shall not forget to point out. An example. So if we try to operationalize here the economic growth uh, uh, economic go, uh, economic grow goal. So if we try to, for example, attract investment through different strategies for one place, this can also, uh, this in one hand, can help to have more decent work and better economic conditions, but they can also uh, expose the more vulnerable groups to climate change climate related events for example so this is this is the main challenge of those working the decision making level uh, on how to operationalize the sustainable development goals there is no only one way there is no one size fitting all is necessary to have to embrace this place based approach where the issues are under, are, are explored at the local level we have the globalized framework we have all these goals but the issues that take place in one specific region they need to be addressed based on the resources that are there and understanding if the really operationalizing one of these goals uh, leads to synergies or leads, leads to a complete degradation of other dimensions the trade off here in some of the published work means also uh, a trade off between the industry and the environment for example one industry is highly pollutant, for example, in one domain, and there is nothing they can do in that regarding. So they try to do a trade-off. They, for example, um, give money to plant trees uh, in some other location. So they try to make a trade-off. They are still, this is very questionable, very, very uh, maybe evocative when we are reading it. So they try to minimize that impact by outsourcing potential benefits elsewhere. So there is also this type of discourse within a trade-offs. It's not only about the sustainable development goals, that the progress in one hinders the progress in another, but there is also an exchange of, okay, I'm allowed to, to keep the levels of pollution of my industry because I am compensating, I'm doing a trade-off elsewhere. I'm, I'm and for example, supporting the development of green infrastructures in my in my urban region, there are now some, some leisure areas which they are fully founded by this specific industry. This happens a little bit in Europe and elsewhere, but is always very very questionable. So we have to be critical when we come across of these kind of uh, 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 exercises. And um, and I think now here is a good moment. We are reaching the end of the forty the, the forty minutes, the first part of the lecture. 
and uh, right on the on the point i wanted to to do a break so because then really embrace a more a more conceptualized uh, component of the lecture if you have questions please uh, bring in to me and from now on we have 10 minutes break and i will see you after the, uh, 10 minutes i will remain here if you want to drop some question i'm free to to interact with you the recording will continue thank you for now
right. So welcome back everybody. Let's get on here the rest of the of the lecture. So uh, any question from from your side? Uh, something you would like to say at this moment? Feel free to do it. Uh, hopefully now you will find this uh, part a bit more exciting if the other one was less uh, uh, interesting for you. So let's embrace the, uh, the economic geography and uh, and uh, and the core content of 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 this module. And uh, just a second, if the recording is on, is on all right. So, uh, what are we talking about when we talk about economic geography and fundamental here the linkage with uh, with sustainability? Everything I've been telling you uh, already helps to highlight this this interlinkage we are talking fundamentally about geography means uh, understanding the why and the so what of where uh, and this uh, within economic geography is about the economic activities understanding the economy of territories not necessarily in this massive quantitative manner of gdp of a uh, grow level of interest rates here and there, but understanding the organization of the economic landscape and the different strands of reasoning within economic geography will help you to understand what we are talking about when you talk about this geography or this organization of the economic landscape, the organization of economic activities across, across scales or within a specific, a specific territory. This, it doesn't mean identifying pure, simple, uh, the largest enterprises of each country. This is part of economic geography, but what we are doing here is not necessarily identifying the where IKEA is located or from where Nokia is coming from, or that the major company in Spain is Santander. So that's not necessarily what we are discussing within economic geography. What we want to discuss is more about the relationships uh, involving economic players, involving economic institutions, understand all of these economic dynamics, focus on one specific location or the relationships of that specific location with many other other locations in a globalized uh, context. So within economic, uh, economic geography, and this is how we understand economic geography in this working group is playing uh, or keep exchanging uh, knowledge and concepts between the evolutionary economic geography perspectives means that the time matters, uh, more theories of practice that can, can, can help uh, operationalize some specific more theorized uh, concepts that is the component of the institutional dimension of economic geography understanding again uh, the, the the role certain institutions play in organization of this economic landscape and um, uh, good that you some of you are uh, here i wanted to see with online and the relation economic uh, economic geography let's try to simplify this a little bit so when we are thinking about economic geography is not only about economic indicators again it's not only about developing patterns uh, classic models of economic development is about understanding the economic players within that specific landscape is about understanding the geographical context in some uh, in some cases, the geography helps uh, some activities. Some industries are located are located where they are located because the geography, the physical geography, helped helped those industries to be located where they are. This is very much related with the shipbuilding, for example, or the large container ports in the in the world. And there is also the governance context. Sometimes those in positions of power, those in positions of decision making, they also play a role in the organization of the economic landscape. They may have the capacity to attract some activities, they have the capacity to attract some type of industries, and there is also a cultural dimension in this context. Sometimes the entrepreneurs, myself, yourself, if we uh, want to embrace entrepreneurship, also play a role in the organization of economic, uh, economic landscape. Some in, in some in some geographical contexts in North America, for example, the entrepreneurs are more risk taking when compared to some parts of of Europe, for example. This sometimes led to the the the, the location of specific activities in this geographical context. But 
per se, the entrepreneur, even if he or she are risk taking, they, they embrace uh, embrace uh, embrace the, the, the investment and investment risk. There is also a number of institutions that play a role in their sustainability, in their economic sustainability, or through funding or through some some uh, incentives or tax benefits. These also lead to a specific location, a specific geographical context. Uh, have a type of economic activities that other places cannot, uh, uh, are not willing or, or not, not necessarily willing, are not able to, to, to have, for example. So the theoretical perspectives in economic geography here as a background, this is important for you to have, to have, to have background if then if you go out there tomorrow in the corridor of the university or elsewhere, if someone asks you, so what have you learned yesterday on economic geography and sustainability? I don't want you to go out there and tell, well, yeah, we are trying to build here, uh, trying to address uh, sustainability issues through economic geography. Okay, but there are different types of ways of thinking in economic geography. That's what I want you to know. Indeed, there are this relational, the evolutionary and the institutional, and they are, of course, very much interlinked. Currently, there is a strong position of researchers, including myself, Professor Robert Anzik, and some of my colleagues within the evolutionary perspective. This is because economic actors, they do not act without history. It means that the past is the past influences current decisions. Maybe a, a founder of a certain company is playing a role on how this specific industry is striving in the, in the globalized context. So the past influences how this economic uh, uh, landscape is organized. Um, I give an example of an industry. I can give an example of a specific firm, but I can also give an example of an air, of, a, of a specific geographical area of a territory. Maybe understanding uh, if we understand the evolution of, of uh, the contribution of Manchester to the to, to economic growth in the UK, we have to look at the past. So decisions made in the past, the industrial revolution, all these process influences how Manchester can now be positioned as a core urban area in the UK. And it is also a relational perspective. And those embracing this perspective, uh, they are more concerned about the interrelationship among economic actors. They do not act in isolation. An entrepreneur needs an ecosystem to thrive, needs bank system, needs a financial solid system, needs, needs specific laws that are not that do not keep changing all the time. It needs also a government that presents a solid budget for more than one here, for example, and some of these lagging behind regions in Europe, including from where I'm coming from, Portugal, they always fight everywhere with a budget. Every year, the budget needs to be negotiated. And this brings some, for the industry is not positive because they always sometimes some live in the some, some uncertainty of what is going to be the budget for the next year. So because everything is very much interrelated, if we think on a private sector can stand by itself, but in most of our economies, even in the most neoliberalized ones of North America, the state plays a role. And we'll see this uh, towards the end of our model with a mission-oriented uh, um, uh, innovation policies, for example. And it is also an institutional perspective. It's important that you understand that the way we see uh, uh, the society out there, maybe the way uh, the economic landscape of Kiel is organized, the economic landscape in, in, in Hamburg is, exist or is, is it, 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 it goes about every day because a number of institutions are working on a background for that type of organization, public and private actors. And there are a number of institutions that really play a core role if we think about the organization of the economic landscape in a globalized context. And within the module, we try to think about these, in the, these types of rationales within economic geography through the lens of sustainability. And here I underline something that you all know probably, and you hear quite intensively in other, in other, um, in other models. We focus on the economy and the society and environmental dimensions of, uh, of sustainability. And geographers, economic geographers, they are very much concerned with uneven development, the, the different, different patterns of development across uh, across scales. We are concerned about inequalities when we are talking about economy. Some of us are more concerned about how certain 
locations, certain geographical locations can 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 contribute to this globalized supply chains, for example, of of of, of peanuts for your uh, peanut butter uh, that can that can is now part of of a healthy diet of more of developed countries, but many others in the low income countries they 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 have difficulties to to although they are engaging in a in, in a economic activity that is is thriving elsewhere is thriving in Europe as part of this healthy diet far from meat consumption for example but they are also struggling to continue securing their livelihoods so there's a lot of inequalities when we are talking about the organization of the economic landscape and this of course as you may easily understand impacts uh, labor and human rights in, in uh, across uh, across the world is important to understand also from economic geography perspective how this uh, the, the the all these economic activities can continue uh, moving towards profit making their prime goal certainly and ens while ensuring a personal uh, labor and cultural rights and respect those involved in activities and the interesting here is that that why why uh, someone in the past decided to build this uh, module on economic geography and sustainability? There are a number of researchers uh, in, in different in different uh, universities elsewhere that are calling for a higher engagement of economic geographies within global environmental change. So there is a number of, of, of calls to bring to align the economic dimension with the social dimension and treat them in the dialogue. So in the, explore the interconnectedness into theoretical terms and in practical terms. So that's the role we all play. And I'm part of, of, of your team playing a role in the in going beyond the mainstream economic dimensions and try to build a dialogue between disciplines, building on your own background. And also here, I invite everybody, if you have uh, your own position in terms of uh, uh, the environmental aspects, for example, if you are an advocate of human rights, or if you are an advocate of, of certain environmental principles, just put that straight forward in your essay, for example. I, I This is something I very much sympathize. And when I'm reviewing articles written by others to be published or be considered for publication in these journals, I try to understand if they, what type of perspectives they embrace. We have to be neutral to some point, objective, look at the facts, look at the data, but I'm also, uh, I sympathize with those that straightforward put their position. I embrace in this essay, a more environmental perspective, or in this essay, I'm more concerned with the social dimension of sustainability because I'm an advocate of human, of respecting human rights. I very much like to see this stated in the, in the essays and also in the presentations, not only involving your, yourself, but a little bit in, in a broader context. And, uh, and then within economic geography, there is also a number of, of, of us trying to build more practice oriented perspectives. And here is, is the essence. There's a lot of theoretical discussions. And here fundamentally, I'm looking forward. And then and, and there was also the request made to me uh, last year while prepared for while preparing this, this module to try to embrace me this practice oriented uh, perspective. Although we need to understand some of the core definitions. I keep watching my looking to my watch because there is a part where Professor Robert, Robert Hansik will come in to talk about the, the seminar and uh, I do not want to misguide him in terms of timing so I may have to get short and jump him to the seminar and then go back to to, to this com component of the lecture. So economic geography is defined as this it examines the economic processes within a specific geographical location. And again, is understanding agents, drivers, innovation policies, uh, entrepreneurship incentives, um, uh, understanding the role of the state, the role of these multinational institutions, such as the World Bank uh, or the European Union, and also understanding the role of more formal and informal economies that if in our context, in the European context, the formality is, is the, prime, the prime role on the organization of the economic landscape, informal uh, economic activities are fundamental to secure the livelihoods of local communities in the low income countries of the global South Africa, Southeast Asia, uh, um, South American, for example. And again, 
all of we discuss here within economic geography is certainly the result not of a silo, not of, of a, a strict economic thinking within a geography, but is the result of the intersection, intersection of different disciplines. These, these disciplines, some of them are aligned in the, the example here. They have been contributing to make what economic geography is uh, these uh, days, all right? And then again, that's the call I make here for building building uh, uh, um, the topic based also on your uh, background. All these uh, possible disciplines, they are fundamental to, to shape uh, theoretically and in practical terms also uh, a discipline so questions that we are as economic geography is concerned and just some examples more, more, more generalized we are concerned in explaining why uh, um, there are there are uh, uh, there are pockets or of, of poverty in some of these large mega regions in the world, such as New York and London, or we try to understand why this tight the number of economic indicators that point out in the in the in a positive grow uh, pattern, why there are urban slums across Southeast Asia, for example, is important to understand inequality in this context, the distribution of resources. It's important also to understand why this happens. It's just the role of the local state or are there multinational institutions playing a role here? Maybe the World Bank with their, with their financial mechanisms is actually feeding these urban slums in the global south, so a number of, of uh, possibilities here. And this goes more in the social and economic sustainability aspects. It's important to understand also how this globalization of the markets, globalization of the supply chains impact people's uh, livelihoods, the jobs and their social, their social uh, uh, the social dimension of all these people, to what extent they can actually satisfy and see that their, 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 their goals also thriving in these globalized markets. Some, uh, some questions that are central to the work of economic, economic geographers and most of us are more concerned again about exploring these inequalities and how they are manifested across, across territories. Some of us focus more on the local level, others on a regional level and others try to understand to what extent the role the role of of, of players for example that are located in in the developed countries in Europe in the, in the UK in Germany in Belgium in, in Luxembourg the role they play in the developments of low income countries what kind of 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 mechanisms they use to to satisfy or to fulfill their own goals in terms of economic developments and what's the impact of these activities in the, in the global south. And we are also concerned in understanding if there are, there are ways of going against this trend, going against of these more, more globalized patterns of economic, devel of, of economic developments. We all know and we acknowledge that they impact the social and the ecological dimension of sustainability. Some of us as, um, as Benedict Smith, for example, are interested in understanding rupt uh, ruptural practices, practices that try, try to disrupt the mainstream. This is 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 is, um, is taking shape uh, these days in terms of research, and is a lot of to do uh, in this in this context. Others uh, are probably more ahead and try to 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 pave the way sometimes only through words a discourse, not necessarily with actions, because again, they don't have agency, means that they don't have the capacity to influence those decision makers sitting in the European Parliament or in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Parliament of, um, of any member state of the European Union, for example. They try to build this kind of frameworks where they try to, to, to bring together how to uh, secure an economic development, but while, uh, while uh, uh, fulfilling social and ecological needs of the society, for example, and there is this, this common good matrix 5.0, where they try to bring specific values that you see they are very much aligned with social dimension of sustainability, and also with environmental aspects with uh, of those uh, more related to economic development. So they point out here ways of making this, seeking this balance between economic activities and uh, sustainability. And uh, this is a, a book, I believe that I drop it in your own lot, envisioning real utopias. And um, if you click on this um, 
if you click on the on the on this framework it will uh, guide ah the source is here sorry if you click then you will see you can you can understand a little bit better the methodology they use to develop this um, this, this kind of framework, this, this evaluation from framework showing the impact of corporate activities, economic activities within the developments of a common of a common good. So we are all, always interested in understanding what is trending and what extend uh, economic geography concepts. Uh, more those more classic can 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 help to address more core needs uh, of of the present. And there is also a lot of discussions, and I'm not going to that if you. If you are interested in more of this philosophical discussion of the difference between space, place, and scale, there is a number of references here. These are the core references. Uh, but it's important you to be aware that if then you go and read some specific literature on economic geography, you may come across of some of this literature talking about the geographical context as a space, others as a place, and others as a scale. So, and, and these some of these books are within Zola that explain all of these difference very well. I tend to focus more on the place dimension, for example, Northern Portugal and Galicia, and understanding the relationships across these scales. So I'm talking about, for example, a number of urban regions in Northern Portugal. I take the region as a place, but it's in, I'm also interested in understanding the relationships across the scale. So between the national state of Portugal and the sub-regions of Spain and with the government of Spain. So ma uh, many of us economic geographers are, all, are, are concerned about the interrelationships across scales. And this is, this is a particular interesting. So the space is, uh, comes here as, more, as a, more, a more generalized definition, more generalized concept, uh, more abstract. The place refers more to a location, an industrial district, for example, uh, where there is some, some, some sense of place here. There is uh, an identity that, that helps you to grasp, okay, this is, I'm talking about the place, I'm talking about this district, that people feel some attachment to that. Uh, to that to that place, and then we talk about scales: the local, the regional, the national, and the global, uh, the global, uh, the global uh, level. And an evolutionary and relation perspective. Again, we try to 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 understand different economic and social processes involving space, place, and scale. So you will uh, come across of these elements. Again, we are here to understanding the organization of the of the economic uh, uh, landscape. And this implies understanding very much the flux of relationships involving, again, different actors, different places, and located in different scales. Hopefully, I'm uh, arriving to you uh, uh, in, in good conditions for you to, to understand what we are talking about within economic geography. There are different uh, contexts. And then, as you understand, an evolution that we come we are now discussing economic geography and everything starts very much with a commercial and regional geography some years ago. Uh, and there was a evolution through time in terms of, uh, of, of theoretical discussions and what we, uh, where we are these days is very much the result of this engaged pluralism where a number of disciplines come together to shape economic geography. And uh, Professor Hansik has been working on this, on this understanding of this engaged pluralism and to what extent a number of disciplines came to this dialogue. You remember I pointed to you uh, earlier uh, to solidify, solidify in terms of theoretical, in theoretical terms, economic geography, not to seek any fight involving disciplines, but coming to a mutual understanding and trying to understand what key concepts from sociology, from planning, from, from urban development, from urban governance can help to solidify economic, economic geography. Also, as in many other disciplines, there are different terminologies across the world. While in Europe we discuss, we are more focused on evolutionary perspectives, relational, institutional, uh, the, the economic geography is debated differently elsewhere elsewhere in, in, the, in the world. There is economic geography, but in North America, they may talk about more liberal geography, post-structuralism. So there is different schools of thought influencing how economic geography is currently approached in terms of, uh, of uh, research worldwide. And um, I don't know if Professor Ansik is already online. Let me just... Uh, yeah, Professor, would you like to um, to intervene? Because then I will uh, um, 
go to, yes. to the seminar. Um, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, hello uh, and um, nice to meet you here online. Uh, my name is Robert Hassink. I'm uh, at the working group of economic job and I will be um, uh, doing the seminar for the um, Stadt und Regional Entwicklung uh, stu master students. So Eduardo, did you already talk with uh, the, the about the seminar for the SSE? No, after after the after you. So okay, then I'll do that first. Yes. So and so um, yeah, in the seminar you are supposed uh, in both seminars actually you're supposed to write an essay. Are the students also informed about that already? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So you know already uh, what it involves to to write an essay. Uh, this is just a timetable. Um, so I would like you uh, to uh, think about the topic uh, for such an essay that is related to the content of the lecture of uh, Eduardo Oliveira during the next uh, uh, weeks and uh, months. Um, so there should be a strong link to, uh, to the economic geography, uh, economic geography and sustainability. Uh, but it's you are free to choose uh, any topic that in that in, in that field, so to say, in that uh, and but of course the topic and that's very important should be also a topic about the, uh, which you can find enough good literature, but also a topic where you can write a good essay about. So there should be ideally different opinions about the topic, uh, pros and cons, uh, so that uh, you are able actually to write a good essay. So this is also something you really have to think about. It's not just any topic, but a topic that is both connected to the lecture, but also is very suitable for uh, writing a good essay. So, as I said, until the 14th of uh, uh, January, are you supposed to talk with me in my office hours uh, that can either be in presence or online. If you go to my website uh, at the Department of Geography, uh, to my uh, personal website, you find a calendar you can click on that and then you, then you can fill in uh, an appointment you can make an appointment basically for uh, for for a talk with me as i said either online or also here in my office in presence um, then after that uh, so that these talks are first to uh, so that i get to know if the topic is really um, fits to the lecture but also to coordinate and to avoid that uh, um, a lot of students do uh, an essay about the same topic. Of course, we want to avoid that. We want to have different kinds of topics. So please uh, talk with me. And then after um, everybody has a, his or her topic, then you're supposed uh, to, uh, to make a reading list. That is a list uh, with literature you are going to use uh, to write your essay. Uh, and uh, so you, Eduard, did you talk already about that as well, and about the list? And uh... I will talk after you. Okay, so please stay then <laughs> online after my. Uh, then this uh, list. Uh, so you're going to make a list. You will hear a little bit more about that later on. Um, and then um, the idea is you make a, a long list of literature on your topic. You're going to read that. Uh, before I send you a question uh, uh, on uh, that is based on on your literature, you will you will send a, 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 an essay question on the in the morning of the third of February uh, nine o'clock. You will be informed later on by email. Everybody gets his own individual question, and he or she should then write an essay uh, to answer that question with the help of the literature. That's kind of the idea within just three days. So you have to read all the literature before you uh, get the question. There's a little bit of time pressure, of course, <laughs> because you have only three days. But if you read the literature well before you get the question, it's uh, not a big uh, deal to, to write a good essay. But please, as I said, read the literature in advance. It's impossible to start to read the uh, literature after you uh, get the question, because then you run into time problems. So then you're going to write this essay, send it to me. I will then distribute to the other students. And then we will have a seminar uh, where the short essays are presented and discussed. We will also work with discussions, with co-referenten. So everybody is supposed to read uh, somebody else's essay and uh, introduce the, uh, the, the discussion. I will also um, inform you later on about uh, these issues. And then shortly after the seminar, you're supposed to finish uh, your essay, to revise your essay um, 
because uh, of course you can get, get some good comments, some good questions, or you learn from other presentations. Uh, and so you, you, you get the chance then uh, to, uh, to improve your essay after the seminar in, in, in within a few days, you then supposed to, to finish it basically. So that's about it. Uh, from my side, uh, if you have questions, of course, uh, this uh, will be in German, the seminar and the, the writing of the essay and the presentations, because uh, uh, the lecture here is in English, because it's for both the international SSE master and for SRE, but the, 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 the seminar will be in German. Any questions from the Stadt- und Regionalentwicklungsstudenten? Uh, Um, is yes. the presentation um, here on Zoom or? No, that will be in presence. Okay. The seminar will be in presence for sure. That's, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Unless uh, very negative uh, things uh, will happen, but of course we hope that everything will be fine. And no, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, unless the, the university allows us to do, but as long as the rules, the regulations are that it's allowed we will do it in presence any other question as i said please come to me in time with your ideas about the topic uh, there's still plenty of time until the 14th of january so i'm really looking forward to to talking with you in the in the office hours to get to know you also a little bit <laughs> so far of course we I haven't got the chance to meet. I couldn't uh, uh, take place in the first uh, meeting last week, unfortunately, but uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you as well. So please, as I said, come to me, talk with me, and then uh, we, uh, yeah, we get to know each other a little bit better. Okay, then good luck with the, uh, with the lectures. Uh, and as I said, looking forward to, to meeting you soon. Well, thank you, Professor Robert Hensik. Now, um, this we will carry on with uh, with a seminar for the international students, Erasmus students, and SSE um, master students, and um, and then so how how this will work? We have now few time. I may understand that you uh, will understand if you have to to leave. So the record will continue, and then you can uh, watch uh, these um, these later for you for uh, for any clarifications. So you may call that I. I cut short the, the, the presentation here. I will recap this next week. This involves the core topics that currently in economic geography are being discussed. And I will use the remaining seven minutes here to explain the, the seminar for the international students and very much aligned with a, with a seminar for for the master in urban and regional developments, uh, I'm here to to ask for a classic a classic essay, where you have to select a topic to discuss it uh, with me. Then the, the deadlines are slightly different. There's a component of literature selection, and is also is, you are also required to 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 read the literature that uh, you select based on the on the on your topic. It's important that you draw the connections and explore these contradictory arguments. Uh, uh, and elaborate one or two research questions that can help you to grasp and help us that will hear you later on and grasp the, the, the key topic, writing a draft essay, including an abstract, uh, presenting it uh, in a very short manner, only with five minutes, five takeaway message, and then discuss it with the, with the audience. So this is a collective uh, presentation organized in a, organized online as a as a in a conference uh, in a conference style. And then there is some time for you to improve this uh, this essay and submit it as a as in a final version. So I write here that the, this this exercise this seminar goes from today until the 13th of February uh, next year with a presentation taking place um, in one of these days or more than one of the days depends of the number of students submitting an essay. So then I have to organize this uh, a little, a little, little. So here, the, um, this is primarily focused for the international students and the students of the Master of uh, Society and Environment. Uh, the students from the urban and regional development, you are free. You are of course free to leave, and uh, if you want to stay, you can also you can also of course stay. And then again, the lecture will be uh, available later today in the in the in the links that you already you already know. For everything else, 
come to me via email or through the OLAT platform. I will respond to you as soon as, uh, as possible. So in terms of uh, important deadlines, and in December, what we have in December, until the 8th of December, which is one week after our final lecture. So you have time here to, 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 to reflect, uh, do some uh, reflection exercise in the terms of the topics explored in the lectures. And then you have one week to send me your topic idea via email, plus a tentative research question. And until the 15th of December, you will receive my feedback as a response. So, so I, then, then I will comment. I will comment on your topic and then your research questions. I will help you to grasp a little bit the topic eventually to narrow it down to a, to a more solid, to a more consolidated idea. I probably won't tell you, well, this is not really a nice a nice topic. Uh, go uh, and think uh, of something else. I will try to, to pave the way for you to develop that idea. So it's important that you really take the time from now until the, the until this specific date to think about and a topic, a topic that that can merge this economic geography, uh, thinking organization of the economic landscape uh, in different there are different domains. I've been telling to you, I've been sharing with you today, and sustainability, uh, sustainability issues. And I compromise myself to give you feedback until uh, until the 15th. And then in January after Christmas holidays, and again you have here also some time to prepare a two pages of reading material. It means organized references please do not bring uh, you can you can bring chapter books but not full books well reading a full book when you have to narrow or if you have to explore a specific top then it is is a is, is less is less common. It's important that you bring these alternative sources of knowledge. Uh, can be a massive online lectures, for example, something that 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 can help you to grasp the topic. But try to be to be very specific, and it's important that you bring also some academic uh, academic journals or short articles within your topic. And I'm asking for uh, two pages of reading material. And it's important that that this reading material is really aligned with, with that topic because it's the, it will be the essence and also also facilitates the next the next steps that uh, that that involve the writing of or the development of your idea, the writing of the essay. And until the 12th of, of January, I'm asking for a submission of a draft essay, maximum of 2,000 words. You don't have to really submit 2,000 words. You can go below the 2,000 words. There are no penalties here for doing that as far as that your narrative is solid, is cohesive, that you really build this storyline that can, that can help us to grasp the, the problem you are trying to address, the concepts you want to explore, and must also try to, to, to clarify the contribution you are giving to the literature or to the practice within the economic geography and sustainability. And ideal, uh, I'm asking for a 150 words abstract within this, um, this uh, draft uh, essay. And then this abstract, then you can reframe it towards the final, the final essay. But it's important that you start from now independently of your career prospects, more academic, less academic, that you learn how to write very syn in a very synthetic manner. And the 150 words here abstract really requires you to be very sharp and very specific with very short sentences, very much as I, I, I suggest here with this, within di within di this diagram, sorry, that you go from the importance of the subject, a little of the background, uh, a little of the methods and the results, and also try to bring some future directions. I'm not asking you to bring all of this, bring all of this together in that first abstract, because then I will receive some some feedback from my side. But towards the final abstract, it's important that you see some examples on how to write a, a short a short abstract. And I'm very much convinced that this is really a, an interesting exercise for you to improve the writing skills, as I somehow promised you that you will be able to improve at the end of this model. Here's some suggestions on how to organize an abstract, going from the importance in you know, one sentence, more with a general idea, then you try to start narrowing it down. And here is a, a, a mis, misalignment in terms of methods. I see in your abstracts, this being uh, cut short in terms of methods, 
And the results, so we don't have to be really this long with five sentences, it can be much shorter, but it's important that we follow this flux. So it's important that you write in a storytelling manner and, and stick cohesion across the, the, your, your, your rationale. And then we have January with a collective presentation of five minutes, five slides, uh, five take home uh, message on your, on, on your topic. And then this is open for discussion. Everybody is, is invited to collaborate and, uh, and, uh, and comment your essay. And hopefully these comments will help you then to, to prepare the final, the final essay. Of course, the details will follow in terms of organization of the seminar. Uh, maybe this uh, timing will vary here. Uh, it, again, it depends on uh, how many of you will uh, go through um, the, um, these, these deadlines and through the, through the seminar. So again, it's the collective presentation. Last year, some of you asked me if this is a one-to-one -one presentation or is the is collective presentation. Everybody needs to attend these this, uh, seminars, needs to come to the presentation from, the 9 from 9 a.m. until the end. Everybody needs to listen, everybody, unless you have some, uh, some, some really... Uh, um, and an, an, an admissible events uh, in, in your agenda that you have to that you have to skip. If you have them, please come back to me, and then we'll try to manage something else. It's important that you use plain language, straightforward talking. Keep it sing, keep it simple, so everybody can can grasp your your topic and the work you have done to bring it to life in a in a in a very in a very short very short ma manner. And then the final. The deadline is the 13th of February, so you have some time between the, the 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 seminar, the presentation, and the discussion. You can you can can help. You can use some of the comments to help you with your essay. And I'm asking I'm asking this year for a maximum of 4,000 words, excluding the reference list. The last year I had a lot of uh, exchange with the students. They were struggling in terms of word counting and then I extend for two times the, the, the length of the essay. So this year I'm adopting the same methodology uh, and I'm asking for a 4,000 words maximum essay, but without counting the references you use. Hopefully this is this is clear. So you, you I'm expecting you here to use some of the references of that uh, deadline of the reading list, but you are also free to bring other references. But you can only include the references you use on the writing. So it is not about dropping references and I'm asking you to organize them, uh, author surname, you know, as common in a published in a published academic article, and uh, but only to make to cite on this list the references you use on the on the essay, okay, and uh, and uh, then you don't count these uh, these uh, these words as part of the four thousand words. Uh, hopefully this is clear. If not, then let me know. And I'm expecting here at the improved one hundred and fifty words abstract. An introduction, the development of the of your narrative, your rationale, your storyline, a conclusion, ideal, paving the way for for future research, or one or two uh, ideas for as a policy recommendations, um, and again the the references used in that uh, in that writing, and this is what I have uh, I have to say about the about the the essay. And you have the possibility here of, of uh, working with me and publish your essay in a short version of your essay, 1,000 words, uh, in this online magazine of the Regional Studies Association. I will work with you uh, if your topics align with the themes of, of, of the magazine for next year, for example. Uh, and, and I work with Sara on the challenges and opportunities of slow tourism. This is their article with a link there. And I also work with uh, Lucy Sam and with Helen and Heinz on the on the two topics related with the food systems and the sustainability. And they, they both of them, they reorganize that 4,000 words essay into a 1,000 word article uh, highlighting uh, the, the key insights from, from their work within this model and you are all invited to join this process as well. So and uh, here I conclude uh, I conclude the lecture uh, nine minutes ahead and if you are listening to this at home uh, I apologize for exceeding the time. Hopefully you find this first lecture help and now I'm open for uh, questions.
Um, I have a question. I'm yes, wondering. Um, yes, I'm wondering if we're also gonna um, read an essay of another person and uh, to comment on this, as the SRE students do. No, I don't. I, uh, I don't have in this module. I don't have that. All right. um, I don't have that exchange of essay. So you come, you then you you present the the essay, and then everybody is invited to. To, to join to join the discussion i may come with the first question to uh, you know break the ice and then uh, keep the discussion ongoing but last year the experience shows that the students they really come with questions this and and then and so there is no exchange of uh, of draft essays and you come you present and hopefully we'll have a discussion and we will certainly have that that discussion all right thanks Okay, anything, uh, any other question? So then if uh, if not, then, 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 then I will close the lecture here and uh, I will see all uh, next uh, next week. And uh, you are free to come to come back to me via email if you already have an idea or if you are to start exploring something or if you have some other difficulty if you are not able to attend the uh, live lecture next week please drop me a, an email it's also important for me to understand the, to understand the, some some conditionalities if you are not able maybe, maybe there are clashes with other modules or so but um, but please uh, do it and uh, and uh, start checking the OLAT platform uh, and uh, reading some materials and then uh, try to to rethink to think about your uh, your uh, your essay or rethink your uh, your ideas so uh, the lecture will may will be available uh, later today in the in the google drive okay so that's it for today thank you so much for staying and uh, i will see you all next week and i wish you a successful week ahead Great, thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.